Gav Marcotti is with us and he's shaking his head. Gav, what's happened? What are you angry at? No. No, look, I, I think this is exactly what you want from Yogi Liv. Um, forget the result a minute. Yes, they're on the verge of, of relegation, but again, um, they're away from home against the world champions. But look at the fact that uh, he revolutionized the system. I don't know when they've played three at the back. Uh, he doesn't have strikers, so he invented one in, in Serge Gnabry, who, who at least you know, did a lot of, of hard running. Um, I thought Nico Schultz, uh, who, who we hadn't seen much of before in, in a Germany shirt, shirt was, was, was exceptional down the wing, gave Pavard fits. You know, and then in the end, the equalizer comes on, on, on a pretty goofy, uh, let's face it, header. Um, so I, I thought the reaction was there. Most importantly, he sent a message. You know, no more Thomas Muller, no more Jerome Boateng. You don't get into the team um, based on reputation. You get on the team based on based on performance. And those veterans that that did play and did stay out there, like like Tony Kroos and uh, um, and and Mats Hummels, neither of whom was was exceptional uh, against Holland. I thought they responded too. So I I think this is a bold step. He did it, and 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 they pulled it off. And I think it would be absurd to to sack him at this stage. Um, I think this is a way forward. Well, that, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a positive spin on, on a manager who is, is clearly under pressure of a country who are, are, are heading in the wrong direction in terms of results. And you mentioned it yourself, Gab, they're struggling to find a front man. Uh, he doesn't know what his best system is, if we bother talking about systems. Personnel issues, he doesn't know what his best team is at the moment. Now, you may say, or some may take the view, this is the Nations League, I can use this to look at other players, mm. and then you may have some, like the German media and the pundits back there and, and the German FA saying, well, actually, no, he's, he's trying to find the pieces of the jigsaw to fit the puzzle because he actually ha he doesn't know what the end of it looks like. And so I think there's a lot of c confusion there. I think he's, he's been reactive rather than, no, I know. than, than proactive. Yeah, no? Well, well, I mean, what, what, what more proactivity do you want? They had a bad result. He changed the whole team. He played a system that, that worked much, much better. I mean, uh, look, I, I'm lost? Italian. I have no problem uh, uh, enjoying the fact that Germany lost and could well get relegated. But goodness me, they played really, really well away from home against the world champions. This is as, this is as good as Germany have played uh, in a very, very long time against a top opponent when you consider that throughout qualifying they were playing a bunch of Muppet sides and at the World Cup against decent teams they were terrible. So he's put that out there. He's shown the courage to go with, with younger players like, 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 like Kerr and, and Schultz. And I thought it may brought Leroy Sané back in. And oh. this is the performance you wanted. He brings now, Leroy Sané now, back in. Now you have to follow it up. Leaves him out, doesn't take him to the World Cup, brings him back when he's not playing, then leaves him out again. Then he's a brunt of Tom, Tony Cruz at a press conference. Then he's talked about attitude. He makes changes and he brings some younger players in because really he's backs up against the wall gab. And quite frankly, I don't think the Germans are in a position where they say, well, we played better uh, and we were unlucky against the world champions because Germany, over the, over the piece, have set much higher standards than, well, actually, we, we played OK, but we got beat. Well, yeah, and it was Löw who set those very high standards for most of, of the past decade. Listen, I'm not suggesting that he's done a wonderful job over the, over the past year, but the fact that he's come around to the fact that, that, that nobody's untouchable, that his veterans can be dropped if they're not performing, the fact that he can come up with a different system of playing, a different style of playing, uh, and the fact that the team responded with a really, really good performance, I think is relevant. I don't think you go and, and you throw the baby out with the bathwater just because you look at the result at the end of 90 minutes and be like, oh, look, they lost again. It's six Gab, defeats in a year. Gab, uh, they were get an rid absolute of shambles at the World Cup, and it's taken them to what? the middle of October to work out that he might have to make some changes. It's, it's, taken, him, it's taken him this long to work out well, that the guys that were a shambles in Russia may need to be left out now in the middle of October when they're already in a bit of a mini-crisis by German standards. Well, you know what, but, Craig, I know that the, the reality is, I know Liv often doesn't look human because of, because yeah. of his weird hair and his, and his T-shirt, but he's a human being. These yeah. are the same people... Who, who delivered a World Cup with whom he's, he's had perhaps the most dominant team that we've seen over the last couple of years. Right? These no. are the veterans <laughs> who look him in the eye, and I know you've been there, and I know you've had that. As you get older, your boss says, Craig, can you do a job for me? And they say yes. 
and then they go out after the World Cup, they go and they play France, and it's a draw, and they actually play reasonably well, they create chances, and it looks as if he's turned the corner. Then you have the Holland game where everything falls apart, right. and now he goes and he makes the changes. I'm not going to go and, and throw love under the bus for that. Usain Bolt, and the rumors, Craig, that he could be going to Malta yeah, good to point. play. Yeah, good resort. You poo-pooed the idea of him becoming a professional footballer. So there's no way, it's a pipe dream. Yet, in my absence, he scored two goals in the A-League. It wasn't in the A-League. Well, he scored two <laughs> goals in Australia. <laughs> We've, we've found out that this team that he scored two goals doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that, that was a measuring producer, stick? That's what producer Pete said. <laughs> Why would you want to poo-poo this? It's a lovely story. It's isn't a great it? story. It is. I, I, I'm happy for him. And um, Yeah, he could be heading to Valletta in Malta. Yeah, great. I love Malta. <laughs> why, why is this not exciting? Why does this not engage you? Uh, because in the... How many years have I been doing this job? 37. About that. Do you know how many times I've talked about Maltese football? Once. 37. No. <laughs> 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 so therefore, I'm out. That's it? Yes. You, you're not on this at all? No, he's a, he's a 100 metre runner and nothing else. He could be in the Champions League. They're pushing for a Champions League spot. I believe that when I see it. <laughs> no, I... I admire Usain Bolt chasing this dream of his of playing football professionally, and great. But I, I just can't help but think, in terms of the clubs and in terms of the players there, this is little more than a publicity stunt. Uh, I don't think it's a publicity stunt for him. I think he truly believes and has the desire to be a professional soccer player. He's 37, Brian. I know he is. And listen, uh, I'm not saying he's going to reach. He's not going to reach any heights. Place me through TV that is going to be years. anything he that was going to change don't start the fact <laughs> that he's either going to view him as a track star. Fair, fair play, oh, yeah. And if he gets on. the option to play professional soccer, then I'm power to him. Right then, Gab. Jose Mourinho's in trouble for those comments that he made in Portuguese after that victory against Newcastle. Uh, what sort of charges could he be facing? I mean, it's the usual, it, it, it's the usual distribute charge. And look, um, this is so stupid, it, it beggars belief. This is not the equivalent of Wayne Rooney shouting an obscenity into, in, in, into a camera. This is a man muttering himself, possibly swearing uh, in, a, in a foreign language, uh, or possibly not. The only reason we even, we even know about this is because we have busybody uh, lip readers who, who like to go and, and, and translate. Uh, for all the things that we can criticize Mourinho for, uh, this isn't one of them. And all that's going to happen is he's simply going to use this as further evidence of the big conspiracy against him and, 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 and create even more of a, of a siege fortress mentality. Ah, oh, so nothing to see here. The FA are picking on Mourinho. Gab's got a point, hasn't he? What's... Oh, go on, Gab. No, it's, it's, it's just, just stupid. It's, would you have known that, that, that he was, were, were you offended? Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that there, there's certain the elements of, of the Portuguese children who are watching what, I, what sort of example is it for yes, them? Yes, the, <laughs> the Portuguese <laughs> lip-reading children, yeah, all, all those guys are, are, are offended. No, look, I, I don't have an issue. Look, I, I, I've always taken the view that, you know, these people are entertainers. You're, you're, you, you get paid to behave a certain way on stage. That's why I had no problem with the punishment for Rooney back when, when he did it and, and other people who, who clearly, you know, swear in front of the cameras and, and it's not in, in, in the heat of the moment. But this, this is completely different and, and I think it's entirely needless. Do we all agree? I, I'm, I'm with Gab on this. Yeah. On, on the one hand, I, I understand and you sympathize uh, with Mourinho, his actions, given the pressure that, that he's under. Um, but at the same time, you understand the league taking the stands that, that they are. It's a tightly run business um, as, as far as they're concerned. I hope it's no more than a slap on the wrist or a fine that Mourinho can afford. I, I have no issue with, with either side of those. But you think that if he gets charged, it's fair play? Well, I, I hope if he gets charged, that is no more than a slap on the wrist and, and, and a fine. I hope it doesn't translate, for want of a better expression, into a touchline ban or anything, or anything ridiculous like that. A couple of transfer bits. Gab, Insigne to Liverpool. Uh, I'm not really buying this one. Um, I, I, I think while, while Napoli obviously under Sadi was a high pressing team, um, the way Liverpool press is very different. Uh, a lot more is required, I think, in terms of, of, of stamina and, and, and flat out pace. And I think Mane and Salah are ahead of Insigne on this one. 
So uh, I just don't see him as a great fit. So I'm not on board of this. Meanwhile, Malcolm wants to play some football, which, of course, he isn't doing at the moment at Barcelona. Yeah, he's really been really penalized by, by this uh, by this sort of 4-4-2 uh, that Valverde has turned to so often. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of being a pacey wide man, he's behind the pecking order uh, to, uh, uh, to Usman Dembele, who, of course, is a more expensive, probably more talented, pacey wide man uh, than he is. So you can understand his, his frustration, um, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. There's been talk of a loan in January. I think there'd be no, no shortage of takers. Barcelona do like him. They do see him as a long-term project. Uh, but by the same token, his morale is way down right now. Remember, he, uh, he turned his back on Roma, did a U-turn to join Barca. Hello and welcome into Extra Time. Thank you, as always, for your tweets. Welcome back, Shaka Hislop. Thanks. Welcome back to you too, Dan. We have both been away. Not together. No, not together. Separately. You went to Brazil? Yeah, where did you go? Nowhere. <laughs> well, where he went. Actually, I heard you ran a half marathon. I did. That's impressive, Shaq. I heard ran the birdie. Boston half marathon. The run uh, eight days ago. A run and a walk. Days ago. Run, walk, run, walk. A little bit of, little bit of walk. How did you feel? <laughs> how, how was the days after, Shaq? Oh, it was tough. Yeah. My toes are a mess. Your toes? Yeah. All my, my well, not all. Four of my toenails have gone completely black. That's a <laughs> that's, 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 that's poor planning. That's that poor, poor footwear. What well, you know. Joyce. What did you? Called, what were you wearing? It's called runner's toes. Is it? Yes. Have you Googled it? <laughs> mm -hmm. No way. <laughs> How do you fix runners? Tell me. Is there something? I've heard is run, runner's chafing. I've never heard of runner's toes. <laughs> I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Gray's got enough chasing from yeah. his shirt at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it back on. <laughs> we get it off again when the golf season finishes. Oh. <laughs> uh, the first tweet is about my. What was the best part about my vacation? I had a very lovely time with my family. Very good. Thank you very much. Was it was it lying in a robe? Uh, my robe having, was nice. Having a glass of rosé. Yeah. Very with, nice pose side. With it. I, I, yeah, a dog? Oh, is there a dog? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Beautiful dog. Now whose dog is that in Brazil? Uh, it's uh, that's my auntie's dog. My okay. wife's auntie's dog. Very nice. Yeah, look at you. But also lovely to be here. I could see that yeah. the dog liked you. Uh -huh. Lovely to be back. Give him a smile on your face. S settle this debate for me, please. What separates a good manager from a great manager? Is Ancelotti good or great? Gal, why aren't you answering? Why are you in a bad mood? Everyone said you were in a good mood when I was away. Now I'm back in a bad mood. I don't, I, I just, I don't see, I don't, I mean, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, Ancelotti's won Champions League. He's won domestic title. <sighs> I mean, I, I don't know. How do you, you define you know, that? I don't know. Gab wants to answer this. I know. I don't, if I there like ever was a him, question like that Gab wanted to answer, <laughs> this was it. Uh, is Ancelotti good or great, Gab Marcotti? <laughs> See, what do you, what do you possibly think I'm going to say, Gab? <laughs> Look, I mean, how long is a piece of, of string? If your definition of great includes the greatest manager in history, all the years that have come before, all the years that will come in the future, then no, maybe he's not. Uh, if your answer, if, if your definition of great <laughs> is broader than that, then Ancelotti belongs in there, and so do many other people. Were you a good or a great striker? That's why it's different. Oh, geez. That wasn't How long I can, tell you, I can tell you what my opinion is of oh. a good manager compared to a great manager. Oh, well, go on, then. A good manager gets you wins and results. A great manager does it by make by having the ability to have everybody in the locker room on the same page and making sure that you know how to manage the person as much as the team. You're a good or great striker? I was an okay striker. Oh, great striker. See most people would say Ancelotti was a good manager and Sir Alex Ferguson was a great manager but right. then and I stand corrected here oh. if I think he may have at least the same, if not more, Ancelotti that is, Champions League title. I wonder who would know that? And he's won leagues in different countries. So, But whose string yeah, was mean, longer? Mm, it's all about the string. How it, long? It's, it, it, it's, it, look, you guys, it's all the same thing. I mean, uh, if you want to use Brian's definition, oh. a guy like Sir Alex, who, and I'm not suggesting, I'm not ranking anybody here, 
who was at the same club for 27 years and enjoyed tremendous success. It's obviously going to be a heck of a lot easier for him to keep everybody on the same page than, say, a guy like Jose Mourinho, who's managed at seven different clubs, comes in, has to build relationships from scratch. It's just a different skill set. You, you can't, I mean, if that's going to be one of your metrics, you can't really go and, and compare the two uh, from that perspective either. So it comes down to gut feel. I mean, gut I feel say, tells me that Sir Alex is probably yeah, yeah. a greater Sorry, manager I'd, 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 than Jose Mourinho. Don't talk about gut feel. Well, that will upset Craig even but, more. But before we move on, uh, if we are moving on, I've got no idea. Uh, I don't really think this is a debate. I mean, be, if I was sitting in a pub, a bar, whatever you call it, and that quite often happens. <laughs> oh, that. Those things. Well, we call it a pub in the UK and we call it a bar here. Right. Right, that's why I'm trying to, because this is extra time. Fair, it's a video, fair. it goes not yeah. just to the United States. I see, so people don't know so what could you meant by bar. Could be a bar, so I need to explain this to him. Idiot. <laughs> Somebody come up to me and sat next to me and said, Well, settle this. Well, what is that? I have no idea. <laughs> Somebody come up and said, I'll have a bit of a settle this debate from me. What's the difference between I'd go, Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't even start talking about that. Couldn't think of anything more boring. Oh, right, I, wouldn't, we, wait, I, I wouldn't talk about Dad. football full stops at a bar. End of story. Dan. End of story. In fact, if somebody came in and started talking Dan. to you about football, I'd get out. I wouldn't even finish my drink. What about get up, the pub? I'd go. Pay the bill, I'd go. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I have no problem, unlike Craig, talking about football to people in bars, but it has to be semi interesting. And I had a comparable experience to Craig's scenario there the other day oh. when uh, I was at my local pub, and this guy comes in and he says, So tell me, is Kieran Trippier world class? Uh. I can't even begin to answer that because what does world class mean? It's exactly the same kind of futile, puerile debate that goes nowhere. You well, let me tell you, you, you should have got your <laughs> beer, guy. You should have got your beer and said, "Is this beer the greatest beer in the world?" Tell me. Answer that question now. Is this a world-class beer? Yeah, exactly. Oh, dear. I need another week off. Wow. <laughs> I've experienced a different Craig at the bar. I, I know. All friendly. Yes, I know, but we don't talk soccer. Uh, no, you didn't, because I'd have got up and left. No, we, we certainly don't. No, I don't talk, I don't <laughs> talk, I don't talk shop when I'm out. Ah. Put the ball away, right? I've got a life. Oh. <laughs> I've got a life, right? When I leave here, when I leave here, I don't talk about football or soccer, right? Where do you do this? Put the ball away and I do normal things. Why, why, why do you do this when you said put the ball away? Oh, put the ball put away. Ball away. Yeah. Put the ball away. What normal things do you do? Sorry? What normal things? What normal things? What normal things? Family things. Play golf. Go on vacation. Watch TV. Not soccer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it, difficult, is it? Is Racking Love going the Wenger, 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 going the Wenger's way of staying for too long? Who's hold on? Who is he? Name him again. Wacky Love. Wacky Love. Wacky Love. Yeah. <laughs> have, have a word with yourself, That's will you? Have a word like with yourself. <laughs> Wacky Love. Get out of here, man! What are you getting away with nothing in this time? <laughs> Gab, you were wrong. They did replace him. Oh, Who's Joaquin Love? And you keep calling, you keep calling Willian, Villian. Right. Is it, it's not Villian. I think it is Villian. What's wrong now? Are we going to go down pronunciation road? He's, yeah, why not? He's just come back from Brazil, remember? He knows. Who's Joaquin Love? <laughs> Who's your favourite yeah. Joaquin Love? Oh, it's, great. it's great to be back. <laughs> um, are you guys looking forward to the start of the new NBA season? If so, I don't watch it. No, we need to move on. But you used to play. I did. I uh, played and watching two different. You things. played in the yeah. NBA. I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Captain of Scotland's under 15. Did the question yeah. say, yeah. did you used to play basketball or do you watch basketball? I'm just bringing it up. I'm just right. putting some context around this. <laughs> Not to the playoffs. Pardon? For me, Bulls aren't rele relevant right now. Chicago Bulls. So I, I tend to watch the playoffs. Just the playoffs. Jack yeah, this time. Uh, I'll watch a little bit. Who's your team? Celtics. Ah. Yeah, I live in Boston. All right. That's all. I don't think outside the box, will you? So what am I supposed to support? Put the ball away. <laughs> Put, the ball away. <laughs> Put the basketball away. Any more questions? I'm, I'm going to ask Gab about basketball. All right. Basketball, Gab. 
Uh, yes, because I'm 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 a little bit like uh, like Brian uh, in, in this case, except with uh, with my Philadelphia 76ers, and we are relevant now because we have the magical Joel Embiid as well as Ben Simmons and maybe Marco Fultz will learn to shoot, and we've got JJ Redick, and yeah, I'm excited. This is it, man. Dario Saric. There you go. This is it. It'll come together. Now, when you have time to do all this at the pub. <laughs> Don't ask me about trippy. That is it. We're done. Uh, oh. ESPN FC is back tomorrow. <laughs> Will Whacking Love still have a job? Find out. Of course, starting to look ahead to the weekend's fixtures. In a climate of uncertainty and experimentation, the U.S. now take on Peru in East Hartford, Connecticut. And here to walk us through his preferred starting eleven, Brian McBride. Take us through this one and the changes that you've made from the Columbia game. Well, I wouldn't say it's my preferred starting 11. Um, you know, we're, we're missing some players, but I also want to see some of these players play. You know, Brad Guzan, of course, a, a veteran. You know what you're going to get. Um, having him back there provides, uh, provides a little bit more stability. Uh, I think DeAndre Yedlin's been great. He's, he's really grown as a player. I'd leave him in. The player that, that really stands out to me and has been talked about for a very long time about being maybe the next one of the next best center backs, Cameron Carter Vickers, hasn't played a ton at Swansea, um, but I want to see him partner Jonathan Brooks. Mm. And the reason for that being these players have experience in not necessarily playing together, but I'd like to see them play together. Certainly both good in the air. Cameron Carter Vickers is very strong, uh, reads the great game extremely well and I think can really help Jonathan Brooks. Matt Miazga's been good. I'm not trying to say that Matt Miazga should be gone. What I'm trying to say is I think I'd like to see Cameron Carter-Vickers against who I think is going to be very important to us or is partner with Jonathan Brooks. Moving on to Anton Robinson, and now everybody's going to, we need to see somebody else there. In my opinion, I want to see Anton Robinson grow from game to game. We know what he can give us going forward. I really like what he does uh, going forward. In fact, some of, some of the best balls we've seen served in since Eddie Lewis playing on the left-hand side, I think uh, Anton Robinson can give. But he needs to learn as a player. And, and getting a chance as a coach to spend time with, with him and putting him next to Jonathan Brooks, because we saw in the last game, Anton Robinson stayed out here the whole time. And what had ended up happening was this whole space that Jonathan Brooks had to cover and also try and help out Matt Miazga. And, that, that big spread right there is too much. Then we go move into the midfield. Jonathan Amon, we haven't seen him play. They're great things. Pacey guy um, can provide a lot of uh, things going forward. Another sort of triumvirate where how you work out your positioning, when Anton goes, where does Jonathan sit so he can cover just in case. You have Will Trap. I want him sitting. He's, he's going to be the, the person that needs to, to be in front of this center back pairing and if Yedlin goes or if Robinson goes and we've pushed forward and we've had some possession he will be the player that can fill these gaps just in case going backwards. Marky Delgado uh, deserves the opportunity I think he's had a, a good outing with Toronto and then what really excites me is this top three and the reason being Josh Sargent um, has played this position in the youth setup and shown he can handle holding up the ball uh, bringing other players in, and when you bring, have that ability, you've got a Pacey, Timothy Way, you've got a Bobby Wood that's got pace, and you, you can see how you can possibly create more problems if we are under uh, duress in our final third. You've got an out ball, and we can hit him with pace. Saying that, we also have some players that can run at, at players. Timothy Way is very good at running at players with the ball. Um, and with an overlap option, be able to get Bobby Wood on the back post who's got some size and decent in the air, I think this could possibly cause some problems. If nothing else, I think it, what it does is it starts getting an understanding. Can we see Anton Robinson understand his positioning better and grow into that position? And this partnership, too, something I really want to see.